Well, okay. good afternoon, Irene. Thank you for agreeing to take part in Under the Spotlight. Um, You're very welcome. Uh, great to have you on board. Um, have you got a cup of tea first? I have a drink. You yeah. Yes, right, you. okay. Right, we'll dive straight in. Um, first of all, the, the bits and bobs that I've done about, I've found out about you. You're married to Herschel, is that, is that, is that how you pronounce it, yeah? Yes, it is. It very is. well done. Okay. You're also, you're a Libra. I am. And you like going October. Long, <laughs> yeah. And you like going on long walks. You've been a director of Bay Tiger Limited for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Office manager of Glenstone for 28 years. That's my husband's uh, well, business. Yeah, well, I think you work with, yeah, you work with Herschel there, okay. Mm -hmm. You've also been an accountant, a social housing manager, and a BDM in the school. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> I wear a lot of hats. I wear an awful lot of hats. I was going to say, yeah. does that, does that, have I missed anything out, or, or have we got most of it? Um, I'm a mum. I'm a mum. That's probably my most important role, my most okay. fulfilling role. I love being a mum. Oh, bless you. Right, um... Let's get started. This is the way. This is the way that it goes. What I'll do is I'll ask you a, a series of kind of like fine facting, uh, fact finding questions all about you. What okay. you do, what makes you tick. But firstly, I'd, um, I'll warm you up with five random quick fire questions, just for a bit of fun, just to just to get us going, and then followed okay. by five more at the end. That's okay. Okay. Right. Go here we it. go. First of all, what did you want to do? What did you want to do when you were a little girl? Your... I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, I had it set in my heart that I was going to be a teacher from young. Um, and then I did my work experience in the school that I, primary school that I went to. I absolutely loved it. Uh, the only trouble was I wasn't academically um, smart enough to, okay. to, to get to teach training college, which you had to do when I was, when I was that age. Um, so I've done it in other ways so I've did I've done teaching in different ways and educating etc but um and I've worked in a school as well I work part-time sometimes in a school now and I couldn't do what teachers do so um in some ways yeah. I'm quite pleased that I never I, I didn't fulfill that role and I found I found that um fulfillment in teaching in different ways okay if you could choose to do anything for a day what would it be and why? This is going to sound really soppy, but um, I would just spend it with Herschel and our son Caden, probably down at the beach somewhere. Um, it doesn't matter to me where it is as long, I, I don't care where I am, if I'm with the pair of them, then that's, I'm very happy. So, very that's simple just, answer. That's some of your, that's lovely. Yeah. Right, do you read? I do read. Favourite author? Do you have one or not? Yeah, I do. Um, fictional favourite author is um, Jojo Moyes. Um, yeah. I love anything to do from her. Um, famous non-fiction would be Daniel Priestley. I could read his stuff inside, inside out, back to front every single day. I think it's fantastic. Go on, give me your favourite book. Uh, 24 Assets at the moment. Um, I've read that several times. Um, highly recommended if you haven't thought about have, putting digital assets into your business or how your business should have digital assets in it, um, then you need to definitely read um, 24 Assets, Daniel Priestley. I'll have a look at that one. I'm looking for Christmas presents at the moment. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a great book. I've, I've listened to it several times. I have it on my phone. I listen to it in the car. Um, I've read it as well and still you know, still I'm learning new things from it. So, yeah. If you could eat just one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> salad. Really? Yeah, oh, I love salad. I love salad. And every single meal, if every single meal, maybe apart from Christmas Day, um, but if every single meal was salad, I would be oh, so happy. I no love one it. likes, nobody likes salad. <laughs> what, what, do you do, what do you do to a salad that makes it so interesting? Um, I just love, I love leaves. So I love um, salad leaves of any sort. And I love things like um, if you cut up um, butternut squash and roast it and put it with, so it okay. becomes a warm salad, um, cold potatoes and salad leaves. Oh, love it. A bit of balsamic vinegar and salt. Perfect. <laughs> what is the best, last one for the first five, what's the best gift? that you've ever been given? 
um, our son. Oh, I kind of. Yeah, because we didn't, of... well, we didn't think we would ever have kids. And then when we thought that we would, um, nothing happened. And then I suffered loads of miscarriages. Um, and he, he popped along when we just thought, okay, let's give up now. Um, and I had miscarriages after. So, you know, he's a bit of a miracle baby. So wow. definitely the best gift I've ever received. He's 15. Okay. I have to remind myself that he is a real gift now because he's 15, you know, he's a teenager. Um, but yeah, definitely the best gift I've ever seen. Lovely. Right, let's get started with a bit of fact finding about you then. So in less than five minutes, I've got a little bell thing. I say it somewhere. I, I can't find it anyway. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself in five minutes, like your background, where you've come from and what you do now. Okay, so at the moment I live in Kent in the southeast, um, and I ran my own internet marketing company. Um, as you've already previously said, I trained as an accountant, um, and I'm probably what you would call a bit of an accidental entrepreneur. Um, a couple of years ago, three years ago I think it was, I was laid up in bed after an operation and thought, okay, what do I do? I'm not going to be moving anywhere for six weeks. So I started to um, understand and learn a little bit about LinkedIn. Um, and fell in love with it and then once we were I was out moving around again we started going to some property meetings and I started telling people about what they should be doing and a friend of ours pulled me aside and said right you shut up now because you're giving away too much information and people charge for this sort of information um, and that's what made me think well maybe I could run my own business and earn some money doing this and help people and so it started from there and then I started learning some skills and then built a team around me and built up my own internet marketing agency um, so three years ago that wasn't even on the radar um, I didn't even think that I could run my own business and now I'm doing that and helping I've always helped my husband run his business um, but to have my own business it's been a fantastic challenge um, along the way I've really enjoyed it I've enjoyed meeting people like yourself um, helping people be visible by creating short information videos and other ways of helping you be visible um yeah and I just think I just love being meeting people and interacting with them and for me this lockdown period has been fantastic in, in yeah. the first lockdown because you know I wouldn't have I wouldn't have met you um I wouldn't have met other people uh, my network has expanded globally so now I'm networking and working with people on an international level so it's been fantastic for me I've really enjoyed it um, so yeah that's I'm from an accountant's point of view I love anything that's very detailed based and that's why I love doing in my internet marketing stuff because you get to the get to the nitty-gritty of what people are trying to achieve with their marketing um, yeah, and I just love I love everything about it so yeah, you brought, uh, do, do you bring all your experiences into what you're doing now as well Yes, because um, because I'm quite uh, detail orientated, so I can rather than just people thinking, um, okay, well, I just want to have a marketing campaign. When I'm, I'm actually drilling right down, say, so, okay, well, what is it you want to achieve? Let's start from. Let's get to the. What's your end goal first of all, and let's work backwards. I know other people do it differently, but that's how I do it because, from an accountant's point of view, you're always looking at the bottom figures yeah. and how you're going to achieve that. If you have an exit strategy, how are you going to achieve that? Blah blah blah. So, I tend to bring that a lot into what I'm doing for my marketing campaigns when I'm working with people, um, and they seem to like that sort of level of detail as well. And even if they don't, I still do it because I can't help it. That's part of who I am and, and how I work, that you have to have you have to make sure all your ducks are lined up, um, because if they're not, then something's going to happen. Something's going to fall down. And then that that makes me look silly and it makes me look as if I haven't been able to help you properly. Um, and that's not what I'm about. I'd rather. I'd rather give 150% and you think, oh, well, she's only given me 70%, I'd, but I know that I've delivered much more than that. So I'd rather over deliver than, than not. And I think that the way that my accountancy background taught me, I was taught by somebody very, I started as a bookkeeper and then trained to be an accountant. And she taught me really old school. Um, and I think that those, those ways of teaching people how to, first of all, listen to your client 
understand what it is that they're about first of all don't try and jump in with the solution straight away get to the bottom of what who they are and what they're about first of all and then you understand how how you can help them um, and you build that relationship with them you build up that trust relationship which is so important okay so you've been a professional for over 30 years with self which i say exactly how many but for over 30 years and yeah. you've had some interesting roles. So I'd like to know some of your highs and some of your lows. What's your greatest experience so far? And maybe the one thing that you would change or would you do differently? Um, I probably wouldn't have stayed in some of the positions that I stayed in for a long time. Um, I'm quite loyal. So some of my jobs that I've had in the past, I've stayed for, I, I don't think I've stayed in a job less than seven years. Um, and some places I probably should have moved on uh, and had a little bit more courage to think actually there's another position better out there for me. Um, so I'd probably change that. Uh, what was the first thing you said? Sorry. Yeah, what's your, um, your, your highs and your, the great, highs. Your, highest, your greatest experience? What, what's the best thing that's happened so far? In um, yes. hmm. I think um, being able to, I mean, through through my working life, I've never worked in corporate accounts and stuff like that. I've never worked in practice, but I've come in and set up accounts functions from companies that are very small and watched them grow and grown with them um, and equally gone into big companies and revamped their accounts function and turned it around and... Um, made it successful. So for instance, when I was in housing, um, it's a national housing organization that I worked for and the arrears that we had, especially in our section in the Southeast was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And I brought it down from something like, I think it was something like 40% down to seven, just under 10% it was. And I did that in 18 months. Um, and I didn't take anybody to court. I literally went around and spoke to every single tenant who was in arrears and found out how we could help them. Um, so that was a big achievement at the time because nobody, one, the people said I couldn't do it. Um, and I do like a challenge. Yeah. And then when I did it, it was like, well, you're not going to maintain it. And they didn't go back up again until I left. I moved into a different role and then I left the company. Um, and yeah, they started to climb again because people didn't take the time mm -hmm. to build relationships. And in any position that I've had, including in my own business, um, I'm really, really hot on you build the relationship with with the people first. Yeah. Um, and that's what that's what builds the rest of your working relationship. So if you haven't if you haven't got those skills, and it is a skill to build a good relationship with people, and if you haven't got those skills. Well, you can learn them, they're, you know, they're, they're easy to learn, but it's how do you maintain it? So taking the time to check in on people, giving them a phone call just to say, how are you doing or whatever it might be. Social media, just aren't engaging in posts on social media, which is you know, what people do nowadays. So just checking in on people makes a big difference. And it, it, I think it sets you aside from people who are just right. Can we just do a bit of business here and then you're yeah. gone and moved away? Um, okay, now imagine that I was an aspiring apprentice and maybe I'm looking to change my career and I want to become an in internet marketeer. One, would you advise it? And secondly, where should I start? I would advise it. I think it's a fantastic thing to do. I'm 55 years of age and I have um, found my niche, what, well, three years now. So when I was 52, I started. So, you know, anybody, it's never too late to find something that you really love doing um, and then you become passionate about it. So yes, I would say it's a very good environment to be working in um, because there's so many things that you can do. You don't just have to do one particular thing with internet marketing. You can, you can um, specialize in one thing or many things. You can get a great team around you and they can be the ones that are running all your email campaigns and stuff, but you're front of house. So for me, that's what I do a lot because I love building relationships with people. And then I've got my team behind me that are doing all the, all the stuff that they love doing, but they don't particularly love being at the front of the house. So if you were to start, ooh, 
if you were to start, find one, if, if you want to do any sort of marketing of any sort, then find one particular, this is my advice, find one particular aspect of that marketing that you love doing and learn it and really understand it and really make sure that you know every aspect of it. Are you talking um, like a channel there? Are you talking like a channel like YouTube or something like that? Or a... Yeah, if, that, if that's what you want to understand how to do, um, then understand how YouTube works, understand what the if you're putting a video up there, one, how you get it ranked properly, how you can maintain that ranking and that you can do it without having to pay any, any money at all. You don't have to spend, spend any money on ad spend or Google spend or anything like that. Um, you can rank it without all of that. And then how you maintain that. So, you know, go to people who are going to teach you that stuff um, and invest in a good mentor invest in a good coach who knows who, who's going to teach you anything to do with internet marketing but I mean I know a lot of kids know how they can find this stuff out and, and work their way around it but at some point they're going to need to know somebody who knows that much more um, and can teach them that much more and so make that investment in getting a good coach or a good mentor um, who's going to teach you and push you and pull you up um, and then you'll be able to be much, you know, you'll, you'll stand out from the crowd because you'll understand the that much better. The internet marketing, how, how long have you actually done that for? Just that? Three years. Uh, just that, um, about a year and a half. Okay, I mean, with the greatest respect for the two of us, we're both the wrong side of 25, a little <laughs> bit. And yeah, within three years, you've learned to do this and you're now teaching people how to do that. So Yeah, yeah. Wow. I know it's crazy, isn't it? It is. I mean, if you'd said to me three years ago, if we'd met and you'd said that, I would just said, no way, absolutely no way. But it was that person at that property event who pulled me aside and said, you know, you shouldn't be giving this information away. And so we had this conversation and, you know, flip back to what I said before about me always wanting to be a teacher. Yeah. Well, this is one way that I can, I can teach people. So then when I thought, okay, well, can I, can I earn some money out of this? So we put together a little program of just how to do a clarity call, really. Nothing fantastic. Well, it was fantastic to me, but the first time somebody paid me for an hour's call, crumbs, you thought I'd won the lottery. I was like, can we book a holiday? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you only earn, earn 100 quid, Irene. But it was such, a, it was such a, an amazing moment because I just thought, do you know, I've done that once. I can do that again. And then I did it again and again and again. You just rinse and repeat. And yeah, that was the start of it. So it fun as well. It, will, it is fun. It is fun. I love doing this. I absolutely love it. And like I say, 55 years of age and I've just thought three years, I've suddenly found what I love doing. And I loved my other jobs, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. And if I had never thought about, if I'd never had that conversation, um, no, I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation now with you, but the world opened up is a different world that opens up. And I think also when you start to educate yourself, you start to read different authors, you start to listen to different people. Yeah. Um, you see the what you see the world in a different way. Opportunity comes in front of you, and instead of you just not you know you ignore it because you're not tuned into it. Um, once you're tuned into it because you've got that different way of thinking, you see those opportunities and you think, yes, okay, well, I can, I, can I do that? If I can't do that, either how can I make myself learn how to do it or how can I put that person, how can I put that opportunity in front of somebody else that, that one, I can maybe benefit from it or two, they can just, they can just have it, but I've had the satisfaction of being, of introducing them to something different. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic as well, like, as you said, to, to do it at, at, at 50, 55, did you say? Or, or, yeah, wow. yeah, that's yeah, really I know. I love it. And I, I, I'm just so very thankful every day that I'm a Christian. So to have been able to be given this opportunity at this point in my life, um, there obviously is some reason for doing it. Uh, and the, the, the amount of people that I've come across, not just nationally, because I know I'm networking globally as well. So the, the people that I've come across on a global networking um, forums, 
it's just been amazing and some of the conversations I've had some of the opportunities that have come my way to speak in front of people has been fantastic and the lockdown has been very good for you then yes it has yeah I, I think it's actually pushed my business forward at least a year um because I've just had that time especially in lockdown one I had that time to just really concentrate on my business the first maybe six eight weeks it was I was a bit all over the place because I was thinking oh, okay I'm not really sure which direction I'm in so then I sat down and thought right okay set yourself a roadmap that's what you would do normally so set yourself a roadmap about where you want to go what do you want to achieve at the end of this period um, and I achieved that probably about another eight weeks into lockdown one um, and like I said I think I've driven my business forward at least another year so which is fantastic for me it's absolutely fantastic love it Let's move on to your I don't like lockdown, don't get me wrong. I'm not. No, I know that. No, I appreciate but, that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Oh, but like, the opportunity I, that it's afforded me. Is, as you rightly said before, we, you and I would never have met because I, I, I would never have done my online uh, network meeting. Um, no. I would never have done it this way. It's always been, uh, and you wouldn't, we, we would never have met. So. No, and we met on a skills exchange thing, didn't we? So, yeah, we um, and it was just a literally, um, yeah, I can help you. Okay, let's have a Zoom call and. That was that, and that wouldn't have happened if lockdown hadn't happened. Yeah. So, lots of things to be thankful and grateful for. Home life. Let's move on to that. What do you get up to when you're not at work, like hobbies and holidays? And um, I love baking. Um, I'm not much particularly fan. No, I don't like it on oh. Channel Four. <laughs> I, I don't like it on Channel Four. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> no, I was very much a Mary Berry person but I love baking um, and I do that a lot uh, so I've got you know various I bake my own bread um, the only thing I don't tackle is things like pasta although I might have a go at doing that soon maybe um, I love photography so uh, I will go out and take hundreds and gazillions of photos on my phone and with my digital SLR that I have I love spending time with my family um, we go, I've got a twin sister, so she's like my best friend, but she lives 500 miles away. So we're in contact with each other every day, several times a day. Um, so we go to see them a lot when we can, when restrictions allow. They live in, as I said, they live in Scotland. Um, we love going to France on holiday. I love travel. It's just not always possible because with Herschel running his own business, it's not always easy for him to get, as you appreciate when you run your own business, it's not always easy to get time away. But we do try and go if we can we'll go to france we love france so yeah and if i had the choice to go anywhere then i would definitely i'd be going to india regardless i'd be over there all the time i love it okay finally um i know we don't normally do this evening but the uh, chance to sell yourself why should the customer oh. come to come to contact irene and uh, what makes you stand up or stand out okay okay well if you're if you're running your own business um, and you're not being visible and you're not being seen, then you have no way of bringing additional leads um, into your business and you're missing out. Your bottom line is that you're missing out. So, and it's really easy to be visible. Uh, you don't have to be, you don't have to be constantly on social media to be visible, but you do need to have a presence there. Um, so you need to make sure that one of the things that you're doing is um, you choose one platform and you get to know that platform really, really well. Now, I can help you with that by making sure that one of the ways that you're visible is by having short information videos posted on your social media or on your website that help explain what it is that you do and showcase either one aspect of your business or several aspects of your business and that will help you stand out from the crowd. It'll help you stand above the noise, particularly if you're in a crowded niche like property or wellness or something like that. Um, and you want to be able to stand above the crowd. Video is going to help you do that. And that's where I can come in. Is it just video content or is there all sorts of other aspects to it? Um, I do other things. I love particularly doing um, short information videos, but if you want a YouTube channel set up and managed, I can do that for you. Um, and then the videos, I can help put videos up on there for you. But what I definitely do is help those videos stay ranked number one for the keyword phrase that people will be searching for. Um, 
yeah stuff like that so it's all it's all about being visible and if you're not being visible um that, like on linkedin for instance no point posting once a week that's not going to do you any good you've got to be you've got to be consistent so you're looking at making sure that you have a strategy in place and a marketing plan in place and that and i can help with that as well i'll put your email address on the on the end of here if that's okay i don't know whether you yeah. whether you want to put your contact data and contact number on there as well then or just an email address but yeah yeah no just um you can put my number on there my website i'm still working on that um bit of a bus on holiday for me but but i do have a um yeah if you want to mark it if you want to put my email yeah, address all the details on the end of here as well but that's it right we're all done with those so back to the last five random questions you did okay. the first five um right um if you were stranded on a desert island i think i know the answer to this who would you want to be stranded with um it would be my family yeah yeah definitely if money was no object what would you do all day <laughs> that's really difficult because again it would be i don't care what i'm doing as long as my um family are with me and that can be my extended family as well I'm very family orientated um i think i'd just love to go out all the time and catch up with people and um go to you know grab somebody's dog and go for a walk on the beach and stuff like that yeah you know. that's the one downside i mean we, we, you've obviously um, there's obviously been um advantages to your business as we've just spoken about with lockdown but the disadvantages is, is not being able to get out there and go and socialize and meet people face to face yeah. yeah definitely definitely and i'm i love meeting people i'm i'm actually quite shy so to walk into a room with people that i don't know um that's that takes a lot of courage for me to do that if i've got herschel with me it's different i mean i'm much better um but i think now that i've gone through this with lockdown i you know the fact that you can walk in, I walk into a room and start talking to people as much I'm, I'm much better with that but um yeah if I hadn't if I had all the time in the world then I'd be god oh, I'd be meeting this person and that person and going all over the place yeah yeah favorite holiday to date what you've been on um going to India okay where did you get mm. I've never um been. you've never been oh my word it's such a beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful country um we went to, Herschel's originally was born in Bangalore, so we went back to visit some of his family that he has um, still there. I mean, he's been here since he was four, so, but some of the places that they took us to, uh, so southern India was just gorgeous. And we went to this one place called the Nilgiris, and there's a um, narrow gauge railway there. It's one of, uh, it's a national heritage site. And it goes through the blue mountains and the mountains in our blue they're at the, the light turns them blue yeah. um and it's just spectacularly beautiful unbelievably beautiful see all the tea plantations um and it's it's just amazing it's a beautiful country i've been there three four times now it's gorgeous really? i'll have to put it on the list yeah um, no it's worth going to if you could change one thing in the world what would you do what would it be um, I think I would stop, uh, if I could, I'd try and stop people being so selfish about stuff um, and just to stop and think about other people for a change, have a little bit of um, awareness of where people are at and what's going on in their lives instead of being so self-centred in theirs. Okay, and last but not least, what makes you laugh the most? Um, I laugh at really silly things. I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of just being silly. Um, I find humour in an awful lot of stuff. You know, my, my son says that I'm my biggest fan because I can just make myself crack up with laughing very easily. <laughs> you're, your, you're your biggest fan? I'm my biggest fan, wow. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love I love a, I love conversations where people start relating stories and then it becomes funny, you know, those and you I might not know that person. If you were telling me a story and the fact that you were laughing about it, I'd, I'd end up laughing and we'd end up having that, you know, sort of jovial conversation, even though I wouldn't know who you were talking about. So I love those situations where a good conversation over a lovely meal with people. I don't drink, so I don't have to have alcohol involved in it, but um, just that sort of relaxed 
um, atmosphere going on where people just enjoy other people's company and conversation. I love those. That, 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 that makes me happy. It makes me laugh. I love things like that. Well, hopefully one day you and I will actually meet face to face because we've met <laughs> a dozen times over the Zoom, but we've never actually yeah. met face to face. No, no, we will. We will. We'll get, we'll get to up there and down here, wherever. Yeah, we definitely will. Fantastic. Right, we're all done. That's it. We're, um, wow. we've, we've come, I know it's gone quick. I think it's, it's been gone very quickly. Half an hour or so. But um, thank yeah. you ever so much for, for coming on there. It's, it's been good. It's been enjoyable. I'm learning, as I said awesome. before, before we started, I'm learning as I'm going along and I'm enjoying it. It's some fantastic people, but thank you ever so much for coming on. Uh, have you enjoyed? Yes, I did. It was fantastic. Thank you very much for asking me and look forward to the next episode. And I, I'm assuming that it's not just all going to be female orientated. You are going to have some men on at some point. We are going to have some. Yeah. Have they all been? <laughs> oh, yes, they have. <laughs> Actually, the funny enough, the next one is female again. I think that's what it is. I think, I think females are coming more forthcoming. I think they like to... Uh, Put themselves out there. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, Herschel, well, Herschel's been on on the. Uh, he, he's yeah, been, yeah, no, he'll he'll definitely come on. You have to ask him. He'll definitely come. Yeah, on. he's been on Lovely. Thank you ever so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a great interview, um, Irene. Very, very interesting lady, and um, she also goes to to show as well that she gets to was it fifty two years old and then she finds out her vocation in life. So. Fabulous. And if you'd like to present at Ming or you'd like to be interviewed on, under the spotlight just to showcase yourself, um, please let me know. All the usual uh, emails and QR codes and phone numbers will be the end of this. So until the next time, um, stay safe. Catch you soon. Bye bye.